Welcome to our adult Sabbath school lesson study. Now we have entered into a new quarter and we'll be focusing on the book of Mark. Our lesson for this week is entitled The Beginning of the Gospel. Now the book of Mark is an interesting book and it is considered by many to be the first gospel that was ever written. And it is really interesting how the Gospels got their names, and uh, that's another study in itself. But we are grateful to God that God has given us the stories of Jesus in different forms. And one of the interesting stories is found in the book of Mark. Many even consider that the book of Mark might be a retelling of the gospel according to Peter. But that is something for another day. Our memory text for this week is found in Mark 1, 14 and 15. Mark 1, 14 and 15. And it reads, Now after John was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, and saying, the kingdom is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. This is how Mark has introduced the whole situation, the beginning of Jesus, and so on. Before we continue, let us bow our heads in prayer. Our loving and merciful Father in heaven, we thank you for the gospels that you've given us. And this gospel, the gospel of Mark, we ask that you will help us understand according to your spirit, as you promised. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our lesson can be divided into these themes. First, the failed missionary, a second chance, the messenger, Jesus' baptism, and the gospel according to Jesus. The lesson chooses to introduce uh, the book of Mark by talking about who Mark really is. Mark is first mentioned in Acts chapter 12, and this is during the time when Peter went to prison and he was saved by an angel. And then he comes to a house, and this house apparently was the house of Mark. Now, Mark has a first name, and his name is John. John Mark. And this name is mentioned in Acts chapter 13. As it describes Paul journeying on from place to place along with Barnabas, we find that John is mentioned, not Mark, but the name John is mentioned, and we understand this to be referring to Mark himself. So we find that John joins Paul and Barnabas and journeys with them, but in the middle of the way, we find that Mark gets discouraged or something, and he leaves them as they go on in their journey. And this is really unfortunate because it causes some kind of quarrel, some kind of trouble between each of them. It's interesting to consider how Mark was so close to Paul and Barnabas, some of the greatest missionaries during uh, the first century church. And so thinking about what happened to Mark, maybe we can also consider, you can consider, have you backed away in your walk with Christ as Mark did or felt like you failed God? Sometimes it could be true. Maybe God has placed a mission in your heart and uh, you might feel difficult. You might feel it uh, too burdensome and might have walked away. This seems to be the case even for the writer of this gospel. But when we think about the story of Mark, we find that the story of Mark didn't stay that way. Because as we see, he gets a second chance. But before that, we understand in Acts chapter 15, Paul, Barnabas, and Mark meet. And Barnabas insists 
that they travel together, that Mark traveled together with Paul and Barnabas. But at this time, Paul remembers how Mark reacted in the previous uh, in the in the previous time when he left, and he decides that it would not be appropriate for Mark to come because he felt like Mark did not have enough of the zeal. He didn't have enough of the courage to go on missionary trips. And so he gets angry, and there is some kind of divide between Paul and Mark. But Barnabas insists that he will take care of Mark and he goes with Mark and tries to be his mentor. And this seems to have helped because as you can see in Colossians, in 2 Timothy, in Philemon, and in 1 Peter, we find that Mark is mentioned. And that is quite interesting because he is both mentioned by Paul and Peter. Seemed like he was he, he had somewhat of a turnaround and was able to help with the spreading of the gospel in very many effective ways. In Colossians, Timothy, and Philemon, the fact that Mark is mentioned, John Mark is mentioned, indicates that Paul also had a change of heart. It is reasonable to consider the reaction of Paul because uh, Paul was a very zealous person, and he, if you read many of the accounts of what he faced and many of the things that he said about his trips and whatever he did, he faced a lot of hardship, a lot of persecution, and uh, a lot of pain. And in spite of all of that, he was gladly sharing the gospel around. And probably he expected that those who love Jesus to also have the same zeal. And so there was some kind of difference that uh, that Mark and Paul had. And so he needed, Mark needed some patient care. And after that, we find that he was very effective in sharing the gospel of Jesus. And in fact, we have the gospel of Mark to even indicate that. So the lesson asks us to consider, to meditate on this, that what is your experience with second chances? Has God allowed you to have any second chances? Have you experienced grace from God in a way that you cannot explain? This is something that you can think about. What has God given me another chance at life or at being his true servant? That's something we can consider. And maybe our experience might be the same as Mark. Sometimes we do not always jump to following God and doing what is right. And so we need a certain pushes. We need uh, some kind of motivation. And if you have probably rejected God's call before, even like Jonah, God is a, our God is a God of second chances. And so he wants to give us chances for us to work with him and for him. And so Mark got this chance. And so it indicates that we can also have our second chances too. When we consider the book of Mark, it begins by talking about Jesus as the son of God and even indicates the work of the Father, as it says that Jesus was sent. And Jesus was sent by the Father and was announced by John the Baptizer as a messenger who prepares the way for the Messiah. When we think about how Mark introduces the book, introduces the whole scene, we find that he kind of mixes different ideas together from the Old Testament uh, to talk about Jesus and the one who comes before. When we look at how Mark introduces, for example, the messenger, he introduces the messenger as a type of Elijah, 
who prepares a way by calling people to repentance and exalting the Messiah over himself. Because he says, for John, when he talks to the people, and when the people ask him questions, he says, the one who is coming after me, I am not even worthy to untie his uh, sandal. The text that seems to be similar to how John introduces uh, uh, how, how John Mark introduces John is found in Exodus 23, Isaiah 40, and Malachi 3. All of these texts talk about a journey. Exodus talks about the journey of the Exodus. Uh, and that, that the angel would go before the people and guide them. And the word for uh, angel actually means messenger. Isaiah 40 and Malachi 3 uh, both talk about preparing the way for a ruler or a royal person to come and someone coming as in, in the place of Elijah. And so thinking about all of these texts combined together, all of these texts are in the context of journeys of a king or of people and there's a leader, someone who goes before to prepare the way. And so the author tries to indicate that this, in a way, poetically begins the journey of Jesus to the cross. Because ultimately, Jesus had to come so that uh, he could be a sacrifice for sin. After introducing John and uh, and uh, as as someone who comes to prepare the way and call people to repentance, we find that Jesus appears on the scene and he undergoes baptism. Baptism not for forgiveness, but to fulfill all righteousness. In the scene, as m kind of most of the Gospels uh, hint at, is a very important scene. It is a scene where the Father, the Holy Spirit, and the Son are present together. The Son gets baptized, and as the Son gets baptized, the Holy Spirit, in the form of a dove, descends upon the Son. And the Father then uh, voices out his proclamation, his grand proclamation, saying that this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Along with this, we have the messenger and the witnesses. All of this happens here at the beginning of the story. And it is an important part of the story because here Jesus somewhat, before he begins his ministry, surrenders himself completely to God. And that's a beautiful thing because if we think we want to participate in the ministry of God, in the ministry of Jesus, participate with the angels, it's important for us to also submit to God just like Jesus did. And so we find that now both the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, all of them are together, one in mission. And this was very important for Jesus because this scene, this proclamation would help Jesus endured temptation and trial even till the cross because he was able to get uh, an indication that he was not just any human being but he was the son of God of course we know in John also that he like that John the baptizer introduced himself as the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world and so this is something interesting to consider when we think about Jesus. And right after the baptism of Jesus, John indicates that Jesus was driven into the wilderness uh, by the Holy Spirit. The same word that is, uh, the same word used is even used when Jesus is casting out demons. And so it seems like Jesus is connected to the Holy Spirit in such a way that the Holy Spirit can guide him with such force. And so he 
follows the Holy Spirit wherever the Holy Spirit leads him to go. And that's something that we can ask God to help us have too. It's one thing that we can consider in this lesson is that we meditate on the incarnation of Jesus and the sacrifice of the Godhead because both the Father and both the Father and the Spirit are involved with the Son here. And imagine Jesus, who was God, has now become human, has become flesh, and has gone into the wilderness to be tempted. And that's something that is interesting because we would not normally want to go to a place where we would risk uh, our lives. But Jesus went, knowing uh, his duty. He came as human and lived as human and sacrificed all for us. And not only did he sacrifice, the Father also sacrificed his Son, and the Holy Spirit also sacrificed Jesus just so that humans could have another chance, just so that forgiveness could be a reality. Now we come to the gospel according to Jesus, and this is as indicated in Mark chapter 1, verses 14 and 15. This verse, these verses are divided into these uh, topics. The time is fulfilled, indicates something to do with time prophecy. The kingdom of God is near, indicates something to do with the covenant promise, and repent and believe the gospel shows something to do with called discipleship. There are many prophecies that were given in the Old Testament about Christ and how he would come. And even there were certain pro time prophecies that were given so that people could know when the Messiah would come. Of course, there are different ways of interpreting these time prophecies. But one of the ways is to look at these time prophecies as really pointing to the coming of the Messiah. The covenant promise is also important. There are many covenants that were made to Abraham, Noah, and the descendants of Abraham, indicating the promise of the Messiah, and especially the kingdom of God. And so these promises were fulfilled in Jesus. And we find that the message of John, uh, the baptizer, was a message of call and call to repentance, of change of life, and a call to believe in the good news of salvation. And especially after Jesus had come and rose again, this call seems to indicate to believe in Jesus and what he has promised and done for each one of us. The time prophecy that we find that is clear about the Messiah and his coming is found in Daniel chapter 9, and in short is called the 70 weeks prophecy. Beginning at 457 BC, uh, it took many years until the Messiah, the Prince. 457 BC is one of, is a point in which one of the commands to uh, build Jerusalem and to take care of all the things that were happening in Jerusalem, the command was given by Artaxerxes. And this was implemented in 457 BC, around the time of Ezra. And from that time, after the uh, walls were built and so on, we find that the next time is the anointing of the Messiah. And that we find to be in AD 27. AD 27 is the beginning of the last week uh, the, of the time prophecy. And in the midst of the week, we see that the Messiah would be cut off. And towards the end of the week, we find that is AD 34. And we understand that to be the time when Stephen was stoned. And so when we think about how Mark introduces his gospel. It is interesting to consider that he talks about Jesus as the one who was promised 
the one who was sent by the Father and assisted by the Holy Spirit, and the one who came because time was fulfilled. And so when we think about Jesus, one of the reasons why we are able to think about Jesus is because of the Gospel of Mark. And so as we meditate more upon this Gospel, may we be grateful to God for guiding us through the Old Testament and sending Jesus to us and for these special disciples who followed Jesus and decided to share this wonderful story, this gospel, to us so that we may be able to believe the gospel of Jesus. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Our loving and merciful Father in heaven, we thank you for the gospel that you've given us and the messages that you have shared through the gospel. Lord, as we spend time in this quarter, may we be able to understand more about you and submit our lives to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.